Hi everybody and welcome back to video number two in chapter 23. Just to review the last slide here, our treadmill was losing uh, $10,000. Whoops, it was losing $10,000 here. Um, and what we want to do is see um, if that segment should be eliminated. I'm looking first at this contribution margin of $5,000. And on the surface of things, it looks like maybe we should keep it. But the other piece is, what piece of this fixed costs would actually go away? And which ones would actually stay? Would it be the entire 15,000 or something other than that? So here, um, if I look down at the sales, let's go back. Here's our sales of 40,000 for the treadmill. Da, 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 da. And here's our 10,000. Now, if we eliminate the sales, we don't have any extra. Um, if, if we eliminated it, we would not have any sales, we would not have any variable costs, we would not have any contribution margin, but we would have an additional 11,000 out of this 15,000 that would continue to be absorbed by these other wellness and fitness segments. So if I continued, I'm going to lose that contribution margin of 5,000, and I'm also going to um, I'm also going to have that 15,000 of fixed costs. I'm not going to have all of that. I'm only going to have um, $4,000 of incremental fixed costs. So what does that mean? That means that I'm going to have $1,000 that I would lose if I were to um, uh, make this segment go away, recognizing that these incomes here are losses, not incomes. So now about, so that's one piece of checking to see if we should eliminate a segment. Here, we're evaluating whether to keep or replace decisions further. Managers must periodically decide whether to keep using a plant asset or replace it. This decision comes up all the time. We want to compare the revenues and costs of keeping the old asset versus replacing it with a new asset. The decision rule, replace an asset if overall income increases. We want to keep the asset if overall income decreases with replacement. Okay, let's see how that works. Here's our existing machine. It has book value of 20,000. It's variable manufacturing cost per year of 50,000. Has no salvage value. And the selling price currently is 25,000. So we think it's going to last another five years. But the new machine we're going to say is going to be a hundred thousand, and the variable manufacturing costs are going to jump, are going to go down by fourteen thousand dollars to thirty-six thousand, and its useful life is going to be five. Whoops, useful life is going to be five years. So if we rep if we uh, keep it, we're going to have tw two hundred and fifty thousand dollars of variable manufacturing costs if we keep it. That's 50,000 times five years. Uh, if we um, purchase a new machine, we'll have 36,000 times five, which is 180,000. But we got to we got to um, uh, purchase the new machine for 100,000 but we get the revenues from selling the machine at 25,000. So um, it is a better, a better decision than to keep 
the current machine. Okay, determine product selling price. As you guys would probably know by now, I don't like to determine selling price based on cost. We want to sell at what the market will bear. Uh, but sometimes this is very useful for de deciding whether we can get into a into a product line or whatever. So the companies can be a price taker or a price setter or somewhere in between. Price takers have less control over setting price um, and then price setters have more control. The price takers use more target pricing type methods whereas the price setters use more cost plus pricing. So let's see what that difference is. Here, the price setters are ones where there's weak competition, the product is unique, the product is branded, high barriers to entry, cost plus pricing. Where the price takers are, we got strong competition. The product's not unique, the product's not branded, there's low barriers to entry. We're going to be using target pricing more. So what does that mean? Here are cost plus methods if we're a price setter, right? So um, management wants to add a markup to the cost to get a selling price. So what are those costs? These are our product costs right? Plus our sales, general, and administrative costs. So the total cost per unit then is going to be total cost divided by the total number of units expected to be produced and sold. So now we determine how much markup we want, and we take these total cost per unit here and mark it up by that percentage. And that will determine our selling price per unit when we take the total cost per unit and multiply it times that markup per unit. Okay, that's pretty straightforward, I think. Now, the total cost method, um, we're going to apply a three step process to determine that price. Here we have our direct, our variable costs. Direct materials, direct labor, overhead, SGNA. Again, these are variable SGNAs. Fixed costs, we have overhead and fixed SGNA. So what we do is we say, okay, I'm going to sell 10,000 of these little beauties. So how much money is that? And we foot that all out based on these variable costs here. And we get 580,000. We throw in our variable. GNA and selling and add in the fixed SGNA and we get 120,000. So we put our fixed overhead here under product costs and we get 700,000 in total. We divide it by 10,000. Our total cost per unit is 70,000, $70 per unit. Now we say, hey, I want to make 20% on that little beauty. So 20% of $70 is $14. I just simply add that $14 on top of the $70 to get $84. I usually do it in one step. I just say 1.2 times 70 is uh, 84, and away we go. All right. Now the target costing method, um, here, when the competition is high, um, we sort of need to say our expected selling price is going to be 80 bucks. I want a profit of $14 per unit. Can I get it? Well, we would have to have a target cost around $66 because that's $80 less $14 gives us this four, uh, $66 of target cost per unit. And that target cost is simply our expected selling price less our target profit, and that will come back to our target cost. So this variable cost method, then, we're going to determine the markup percentage by taking our target profit plus our total fixed costs and divide that through by our variable costs. And then 
we'll determine the do dollar markup per unit by um, taking our variable cost per unit and multiply it by this markup percentage that we calculated here in number one. Then <laughs> we're going to determine the selling price per unit by taking the variable cost per unit and add that markup per unit that we calculated in number three. So let's see how that works. So for number one, we have this target profit of 140,000. Our fixed costs, SG&A costs, our tar target profit is going to be then uh, added to our total fixed cost to get 340,000. So now our variable cost per unit is going to be $50. And the units to produce and sell are 10,000. So my variable cost is going to be 500,000. So if I want my target profit plus my total fixed cost as a percentage of total variable cost, that's going to give me my markup percentage here of 68%. So now I move that 68% up here, take my variable cost per unit and move it here and I can there cal calculate my markup per unit add it to the $50 and I get $84 all right now let's take a look at evaluating special offer decisions in this case companies sometimes receive special authors offers at prices lower than their normal selling price a um, couple of things to be aware of when you're doing this. Existing customers sometimes will pay attention to what you're doing with these special deals and want those special deals for themselves. So always be sure if you do offer a special deal under special pricing to be sure that it's, it's uh, not going to erode your existing customer revenues. All right. So the decision to accept these special offers should be based on their income effects. No surprise there. We want to accept the special offer if income is going to increase. And naturally, if it doesn't increase, we want to reject it. So here, our, they're going to offer us $10, but they're going to, we're going to sell 100,000 units. Now, I've got to be careful on one other issue, too, and that's capacity. Make sure you have open capacity for 100,000 units, which we'll assume here. So our variable costs are direct material, direct labor, and variable overhead. Total contribution margin, therefore, is going to be $3.40 when we subtract those variable costs from net sales. And now our fixed costs are 60 cents and 80 cents for general and administrative and fixed overhead 60,000 and 80,000 so we're going to make two dollars per unit here or 200,000 for the special order okay so should we accept an offer to earn additional income of 18000 So we went through the same calculation I just went through, and we've determined that we're going to make $1.80 incrementally on this special offer, totaling 18000 We should accept that offer because we're going to make $18,000. Okay, determine the price of services and time and materials pricing. I think we're going to have to, do, to come back to this in the next video. And when we do, we'll take a look at determining the price of services using time and materials pricing. Until that time, bye for now.